Yo guys, good evening. How are you doing? We're back and once again we're gonna be painting this cool little grot for Chimo. Zoom in on this little guy. Isn't he cute? Look at him with his uh, daisy pattern urban camouflage. Got a bit more work done on this guy last night in the Hellstorm stream. Got the skin coat done. A little uh, fade on his lip as well. Today, we get this guy finished. We've got a little base for him. I was going to make a base. And uh, unfortunately, I've had absolutely no time. Uh, so, earlier on, I was digging around in my uh, drawer of shame. I found this cool resin base, which has got this uh, interesting little carving on it. We could make that look like stone rather than wood quite easily, I think. And get this cross all out. Happy days. In the chat, we've got Dez, the Johnson Air, Ketz, AJC72, Too Many Sprues, Pulling a Cracker, and Goliath Games TV. How you folks doing? Thanks for joining in tonight. So, let's start off on the grot. Let's finish the grot, and then we can do the base and mount him, and he's, he's done. So, all we've got left to do is the eyes. A little bit of highlighting on his, uh, his little snow cap thing that he's, he's wearing. A little bit of highlights on the grenade, and we'll put some little wear and tear marks in there as well. And then that is pretty much it. So let's get the simple stuff done. A little bit of a warm up. Thank Chungus, how you doing? Uh, sad news today. Eddie Van Halen popped his clogs. Went to a big rock concert in the sky. Never mind. Never mind. It'll be okay, guys. We still got Lemmy. Oh, shit. Kai Bob, always appreciate you stopping by, man. Always appreciate you stopping by. I think it's real nice you just come in, say hi. And do one. Uh, Dez says, Honor Guard and Victrix Honor Guard are broken. You can't tell a character if they're within three inches. There's nothing about closest model, and Victrix keep their two plus, three plus. Okay. Fair. I think that's fine. You can still target them, though, right? Because they weren't ever characters. Chimo! How you doing, bud? So, just got a little bit of Vallejo Model S Silver. We're going to hit. Couple of quick highlights on his stick bomb. We will make this a little bit dirty, so we'll get some a uh, little bit of weathering going on. A couple of quick washes. Right now, let's just get in a couple of quick scratches. So just a small amount of paint on the brush, some very light brush pressure, and just add in a few points of interest. Oh yeah, that's for sure. But if you're if you're going to do that, then that means that you're having to stay within the confines of terrain uh, and near that with your character. So that limits a lot of what's going on. Um, I don't think it's going to be that abused like, at, at all, really. Um, besides which, while they've got a three pin bone and so on. When it's only two of them, it's not really that bad. Uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of okay with it. I don't mind. Let Space Marines keep at least one three of invulnerable save that isn't on a Primark or a named character. Right, let's grab. What brands have we got on the pile? We've got a mixture of. I think it's just Rhinox hide and something else. Just gonna take a touch of that. It's just Rhinox hide and some black paint. And I'll turn that into a wash. Or, well, I'll turn it into a glaze. Just get real thin. And then we'll use that and just drop a few shades in here. New heavy intercessors do look cool. But they do look cool. I. I I genuinely like them. They look all right. Uh, so, somewhat hoping that they'll be decent. Their rules look okay. Um, I've always liked the Gravis armor, like the fat boy Gravis dudes. They just look cool. 
They just look cool. So just brushing this glaze on. Keeping it thin. And just using this to sort of pull in a couple of places. Tint this grenade. Give it a little bit of a dirty feel. Stop it being quite so shiny and new. I'm still super excited about the new Necron stuff. Um, like we're definitely going to have to get the Silent King. I think he's pretty much a must-take in a competitive Kron list. Um, there, there's just some cool tricks that you can do with him that are really going to help you out. Uh, I wrote a list a couple of days back. He put some hazard stripes in my honor. Brilliant. Brilliant. What on now? Is it on another base room? Because that, that's that's just a no. No. Uh, but yeah, I wrote a list a couple of days back with the Nylak um, guys. Because they've got some stuff that I think is super cool. Uh, having super obsec, to me at least, is going to be game winning. Absolutely game winning. Um, well, I've got two Space Marines on this thing, so I control it. Well, I've got one Necron, therefore it's contested. You can't have it. I think that is super, super clutch. And then having things like my Scorpet Destroyers charge a unit that's on an objective with Obsec, kill loads of it, and then I'm like, well, I've got Obsec. And I'm like, so have I! And then what I think's really cheeky, like really, really cheeky, is um, the Crypto Thrall Murder Buckets. You don't need to take a Cryptek to take them currently. That may change. That may be FAQ'd. And with good reason, because my plan right now is to probably take three units in a list because they're units of two they're 40 points they've got two wounds which means they've also got living metal um and then use a unit of two guys to raise banners or use all three units for i think i can get away with it for you can get two units for one cp to go into um, strategic reserves, run a unit of two straight in on the on the side in turn two. Cool. We've deployed scramblers, and then straight in on the back, we've deployed scramblers. That's that's not a lot of of outlay for that. So that that's quite a cheeky little move. Uh, when I was watching the Top Titans um, sort of book review earlier on. They hadn't seen that one. But I like Nylak. I, I think the Super Obsect's cool. I think their strat for do an action and still shoot is is great. And Brian made comment on that, that he feels that's a good way to play them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested with these. Uh, A-Cold, yeah, I've, I've genuinely thought about that. But it's that strat. That strat is super, super good. The six inch pregame move, I think is brilliant. I think that's so, so good. That strat's all right. And the uh, Warlord trait, I remember at least being impressed with, if not it being actually good. So, yeah. Uh, Chimo, what color should we do this Grot's eyes? How are we doing the eyes on the Grot? What are you thinking? While you're thinking, let's get a little bit more weathering on this stick bomb. You reckon I'll get FAQ'd into Oblivion? I, I think it will probably be FAQ'd. Because there's things like the plasma site that says, you know, you can't have more plasma sites on your roster than you've got um, score pack dudes. Like, that makes sense. 
It makes all the sense in the world. So it's, it's gonna win me a game though. You know. <laughs> Tist! How you doing man? Doing well, how are you? I'm just working on Chimo's Grot, and I'm gonna do some bass on him. Chimo, I need to know how you want the eyes painted though, man. We're kind of at that point. You should do red eyes with this guy, maybe yellow. You want yellow eyes? Cool. If you say you normally do red eyes, so I'll tell you what, let's do red and work it up to yellow. Let's go kind of deep on the eyeballs for this dude. Get some fresh red. The stuff on my palette is kind of gloopy. And then we'll work it up to flash gets nice and quick. Then go real bright. Let's just grab some Kato Red, Flash gets yellow, and I want some metal white highlight for this as well. Cash, you work on the five bikes for Harleys? Yeah, you can keep those bikes. Fuck. Fuck. So, Harley bikes. They're still good. Still good. Make sure we get all of the eyeball. It's quite a lot of space on this guy. To work around the eyes, they've given him really big, somewhat cartoonish eyes, as you can see. Uh, using a robot as a desk to write on. Why not, dude? It's about the same weight as a desk, so I feel it's appropriate. All right, let's grab some flash kits and start working this in. So work up very quickly through orange, just so we can get into yellow real fast. We haven't got a lot of space here, so really what you're looking for when you're working on something very small is contrast. I'm gonna try and leave just a little bit of red around the edges of these in those darkest sort of recesses around the outside. Build up the brightness a touch each time we go through. So I have to grab more yellow. Pop that in. And Chimo, next colour question for you. What are you thinking to do the little marble basing accessory that we've we've got here? The Nightbringer is super, super cool. Now, I've got a favor to ask you guys. I am thinking of commissioning an artist, a 3D sculptor, to create a version of the Nightbringer. Because GW's Mini is somewhat dated, let's be honest. It's still a good Mini, but it, it's not like new and fresh. It's also fine cast, and I'd rather do unpleasant things to myself than have a fine cast mini in my army. Uh, now I'm aware, I am aware that there's a brilliant star god of death, that Monument Hobbies, sorry, not Monument Hobbies anymore, they, they split the Creature Caster do. It's beautiful. It's also on a 60 millimeter base, not a 40 millimeter base. So therefore, is useless to me. So before I start looking for an artist, which to be fair, all I'm going to do is hit up Fiverr and post a job. Does anyone know of a model that would be a good proxy? It's got to be about the right size. So we're looking at somewhere in a region of about four and a half inches tall uh, with a base of 40 millimeters. 
because obviously we're going to be looking to take this army to tournaments and we want it to be correct. Or is anyone here a 3D sculptor and thinks, yeah man, I'll sculpt you one. Pink marble, pink marble it is. Should we do like pink with black veins? Just getting a yellow in now. So we've got a nice build up of red all the way through to a very bright yellow. Now, let's get some of that Menoth white highlight in there. Looking swish, thank you. You just caught me one from an orc. Uh, I genuinely love your enthusiasm there, man, but uh, I'm gonna give that a hard pass. <laughs> I spent a little while today looking around the internet for uh, either artists or companies that make 3D uh, sort of alternate models or just their own random. Um, can you think you're an ultimate death bringer here? Yeah, absolutely, dude. Go for it. So just going to hit the centre, almost like painting a pupil. Now with this uh, very bright cream colour that we've got. Meloth white highlight. Some of that flash gets yellow. Bright yellow eyes. Let's have a look at this. It's cool. It doesn't scream terrifying to me, though. That's any problem. Uh, I do like it. But it doesn't scream Nightbringer to me. Even the alternate head with the skull. In fact, that looks a bit naff, actually. Mm. Not quite. Not quite. Um, yeah, it is. My, my sculpting is... It's not so good, if I'm honest. Like, the, the Demon Prince of Nurgle I started stalled because, if I'm honest, I don't have the ability to do what I wanted to do with it. So, that just sort of dropped off, and that was the end of that. There you go. So, nice bright yellow eyes, a little bit of red thrown in there to help tie him into the rest of your dudes. He's got very bright eyes. That's a lot to his expression, that, though. Alright, and grab some more of that silver and just go back quickly to the stick bomb and tidy up a couple of these highlights where we've put our weathering to give it a bit of a multi-layered scratched and dirty look uh, I have no idea about Overwatch at all I know my housemate plays it but no clue whatsoever. That's the... Was I watched the Blizzard? Kind of FPS... Game? That's, that's how much I know. <laughs> cool. And I'm just get a highlight on this little button there. It's canteen. Like so. Cool beans. Crooked grain, how you doing? Oh yeah, we got a belt buckle to do as well. Press that. Just a couple of tiny, tiny, tiny highlights there. 
And we're done. Right, that is our Grot. He is looking spiffy. Really like the flesh tone on this guy. That was the uh, dark green we used from P3. A lot of necrotite green, some flaskets yellow built up into that over several, several thin coats. Really nice set of shades. Yeah, I like it. So, we're going to do pink marble, says Chimo. I can get down with this. Uh, do we do pink with black or pink with white? Let's get some pink down and we'll go from there. So, we're going to need a hookalyptic pink. That's an obvious one. Let's get some warlock purple and whatever they call this stuff. Emperor's children. So we've got some bright pinks. Let's grab some black as well. And yeah, that'll do for now. Also get a slightly older brush because you're going to be painting onto a rough surface, no point in damaging our new one. Let's set the palette up. dot black, I don't need much. So who's doing some hobby tonight? Who's maybe redesigning the Space Marine army? Who is looking at their pile of wolf and going, you were so cool last week and now I hate you. Two these brews. Um, there's so many really harsh answers to that that I'm not going to. That there's too many easy, very easy uh, like comments that I could make on that one. So we'll leave it. Wolfen is still cool. Wolfen is still cool. Not according to about three different chats that I'm in, but Wolfen is still cool. Just all your Iowatoff element games in the back chat. Oh, holy shit, dude. Honestly, mate, I'd have, I'd have got that through eBay and saved yourself the money if you could cancel that order. I think that's probably the best thing to do. If you use the voucher to hit, get yourself some airbrush paint. Um, so I've, I've seen it, the Forge World Mongol thing. It just doesn't do it for me. That was one of the first things that came up when I searched for like alternate Nightbringer models. That was the one. It was everywhere. And I'm like, alright. Okay. But it just... It's missing something. I think it's the scythe. It looks like... It looks like something that's terrifying. Not the Star God of Death. Which is... Kind of the vibe that I'm after. Um, free-handing half Imperial Eagle while drawing over the new Dark Angels in a circle rule. Dark Angels are good, dude. Uh, yeah. Fit, too many sprues, don't... Like, anyone that wants to buy an airbrush, as much as I'd love for you to go to Element and use my affiliate link and so on to buy said airbrush, because I'll make a ton of money out of it, please don't do it, all right? Seriously, don't do it. Because Element overcharge for that shit. Like, really overcharge for that shit. Um, go to eBay. You can pick up the Eclipse for anywhere between 116 and 130 Which is a lot cheaper than Element. And that'll include shipping. So you're looking at saving a good 20 to 30 pounds at minimum. Use the Star Killer. Um, isn't that the creature caster one? Because the issue with the creature caster one is that it is too large. It sits on a 60 mil base, not a 40 mil base, and can't do that. I don't know why we're painting that pink. I'm going to paint all that black. Paint all that black.
<laughs> I mean, I could put Meep on the table, but... Uh, no, I, I, absolutely not. The, the Eclipse is its own airbrush. That's it, the Dismayer. Just saying. Uh, Des, it does, and, and it looks great, but the, the issue and why I'm looking at an alternate model or getting to a commission sculpt is that my own conversion skills, my sculpting skills, are not great. Like, don't be wrong, we can get some of the basic stuff done, but when it comes to like big centerpiece things, nah, not so hot. So, this is why. Um, well, it's still 40 mil on GW's website. And in the codex, there may or may not be some pictures of it that show it still on probably the same base that it's currently on. And so I can't see it changing. Which is a shame. Uh, but having it on a 60 mil base would obviously be great because then you can smack. Yeah, f for sure, Des, but. Damien doesn't take on a lot of commissions. Um, but I could ask him. Could ask him. He might be dying for it. So what we've done is we've got some uh, Warlock Purple, I think it's called. No, no Screamer Pink. It used to be called Warlock Purple. Um, you can do a Sprucron version. Brilliant. Uh, might pass on that one as well. Thanks, comments. Oh, well. Uh, so yeah, all we've got is some Scream of Pink that we're working out with a little bit of black to really keep this nice and dark for now. Then we'll start getting some veins on with pink. So we've got some Empress Children, which is going to start mixing into this now. Um, beginner's kits, if you mean for airbrush, then I would do what I did and just go to Amazon. Just do a search for airbrush with compressor and keep looking until you find one that is a dual action airbrush that comes with a compressor with or without a tank your choice uh, my first one was with a tank my current one doesn't have a tank it's, it's literally personal preference and the best kit um, so i've just been kicked out of the house because of the six people i'm currently is it your house Because if it is, one of those people whose house it might not be is fucking off. Uh, anyway, yeah, like with the, the Irish thing, good to Amazon. Check around, you live your parents. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Why didn't they just send you to, like, your room or something, man? Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Too Many Sprues. Uh, you got friends coming around, so can you fuck off and sit in the drive? I reckon your mum's just got you out of the house, mate. You know. <laughs> Belfire Forge, that could be an option. One of the reasons I'm thinking of getting something 3D designed is because then we've got an STR file. Frozen's got a printer. You know, we could do a inspired by Nightbringer for sale. So, you know, that's a little option. So you're just working up the pinks. 
just keep on adding in Scream of Pink. Not Scream of Pink. That was the old one. Emperor's Children. Keeping this super bright. And then pretty soon we can start bringing in some lines of Marvel effect. But I want to get this nice and bright looking. In fact, this is needing to have the exposure turned up a bit because it's a wheel. There we go. That wheel, not bad. There we go, that looks a bit more like normal. Mr. McDade! How art thou? Nick's coming out for a painting lesson next weekend. Finally managed to get it to happen. This has got to be what, the third attempt? Maybe the fourth? I think it was the third attempt, uh, which reminds me, I need to reach out to uh, Mr. Swallow as well, see if he's still interested. And then Wednesday night, we've got Danny's lesson, doing some non-metallic metal with him. It's going to be fun. Moister than an oyster. Feel a bit sick, man. I got too many sprues there, bro. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. You can probably, for an extra 15 quid or so, though, just get a little bit more. So look for and it's a good deal with things like cleaning kit rather than just like here's your airbrush. Um, because you'll probably find something that is full of extra little bits, like maybe an airbrush cleaning cup or some um, pipe cleaner style brushes, that sort of thing. And that's that's what you need to be looking for, really. That's the best bet. Right, mixed in a bit of hooker lipstick pink. Let's hit some of these edges. Really bring this up to a bright, vibrant pink and then we can start getting some marble lights out I think we'd be better off if we went for a lighter colour vein than a darker coloured vein so we'll put some white down then we'll glaze it pink and then we'll put some more white down that we won't glaze So we're going to do like a three-stage process, I guess. Uh, you good with pizza on Friday, Nick? I mean, I know you'll eat whatever, but... You better eat your fucking crust this time. Alright, there we go. So we've got some nice bright pink. Let's grab a brush with a bit more of a sharp point. And some white ink, I think. Drink instead, mate. Not if you want a proper painting lesson the day after. Right. So, gentle brush pressure, and then just draw lines. Basically, keep them as random as you can. Let them branch off each other.
and get plenty done. Try not to get everything from like one point as well. So don't draw everything back to one one area. Have them go in all over the place. Turn it in different areas. Overlapping is fine. Like if you go and have a look at just marble. So here's a load of reference material for marble. Like none of this is. Um, a regimented pattern yeah like look at look at this for instance that's all over the shot yeah you've got lines going in diagonals you've got lines that are appearing dead straight yeah. you've got big black splodges on there as well there's loads of different elements to marble so we need to try and replicate that a little bit on here obviously one of the uh, issues that we've got is that we have a different scale um, we're having to paint something that is way way smaller than you'd want it to be for doing something like this so really all we're actually painting on here is the super uh, bright or super dense uh, channels in that marble because we're never going to get all the small ones in there just don't have the space for it so remember if you do a thick line on this that means you've got maybe a vein of marble that is two inches maybe three inches across in real life and that's obviously not the way that marble looks very often so we've got a load of straight lines coming in and we'll start to break them up a little bit Again, it's all just about light brush pressure. What I mean by that, for anyone that doesn't know, is you want your brush to be barely touching the object that you're painting. It's an important skill to learn. you're in control of your brushwork, everything else comes easier. So I reckon that's probably enough. Let's make sure we haven't neglected any areas particularly. Make sure none of it's looking too regular. And we'll glaze that pink. So let's grab some of that uh, Empress Children. It's a very bright pink. Turn that into a glaze. Make sure there's not too much on our brush. And then paint that, although not the cat hair, over that. That was way too much on the brush. Danny, how you doing, bud? Just talking about you. You want a painting lesson tomorrow night? What sort of time suits you, bud? Early evening would be ideal. Yeah. Can accommodate. So it's going to take a couple of coats to cover up the white. Gutting your desk and workshop. Damn. Austin Ozzy! It is October, man. That's why we've got our uh, little grot who was in the mystery box this time. 
he's just been finished. Now he's just working up his base, getting some marble down. Uh, does 8 sound good again, or would the next one be better after the house storm stream? Uh, if you want to do it at 8 o'clock, that would be better, if, if I'm honest, because it means that I can use the rest of my evening for something rather than it all being sort of uh, stuck around that one time. I prefer Mondays anyway, because it's like my missus plays D&D, &D, uh, so I don't have to worry about anything else. Um, like making sure that she's not pissed off that I'm busy on the one night we can see each other and so on. Uh, but tomorrow night is her first D&D session of a new group which had to be tomorrow for whatever reason. So, Not a, not a deal breaker if it needs to be at 8 tomorrow. But Monday would be better for me if that's possible. Alright. There you go. So we've now got some very faint stripes in there that will be pink. So we'll do the whole thing again with white. I have a 150 on eBay. Give me a second, Chief. Cheapest, then. Uh, we've got one for one forty three. Uh, one forty. One fourteen. One twelve plus postage. Like. There you go. 115 quid. Uh, and it's the right one. CS, not BS. Donna Chan! Doing well, dude. How are you? So I'm going to go back to that white. I'm going to do all of our little stripes again. We're trying to avoid most of what we've just put down. Doesn't matter if we paint over bits of it, but we want to leave some of that showing through. That's why we've just done that, that step, remember. So too many sprues. I want you to tell me how much we've just managed to save you. AMP services! How you doing, Justin? Good to see you, my man. Everybody, give this boy some hype. Go give him a follow if you don't already. Absolute badass. And, and, it's just sent me a load of terrain. A load of terrain. Bring some hobby love. Absolutely, man. How's your stream? What are you up to today, bud? Really, really excited for that scenery as well, by the way. Like, fully excited. Although, question. Little question. All the Necron uh, like energy fields and so on that you guys have, have got. You don't do one that's clear acrylic? Because I've just got some like transparent paint and, and coloured them myself that way. I went with red because that matches my army, so you know, no big deal. But surprise, it's not a clear version. Ah, okay. Well, now I know for the for next time then, because there might be a next time. The scenery is super good. I'm waiting to see what I get stung on an import taxes. 
uh, which which might be extreme from what uh, Studio J7 said, but we'll cross that bridge as and when we come to it, mate. I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to do a, a weekend uh, of scenery making. Uh, yeah, shit shipping. <laughs> shipping was cheap, right? Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, we're going to do a weekend's worth of scenery painting. We're going to get the Death Ray Design stuff going on. We're going to get the uh, Alliance Armory stuff going on. We'll have an entire table of Necron scenery painted in that weekend. We'll stream it. It'll be fun. Uh, do they charge equal tax for his personal package from individual versus the company? Sometimes. Sometimes. It depends on how pissy the customs officer is, basically. Uh, I have friends in the States that send me various things uh, throughout the year. And sometimes I pay freight on top of the freight. Sometimes not. So, we'll see. Ichu, how you doing, man? So, so how much was the uh, the element one? Must have been, what, 170? Roughly? As much as I love element games, everybody. And I do, they are my absolute like go-to supplier for pretty much everything. Apart from my local, of course. Airbrushes, don't buy. Uh, awesome, dude. Mate, I, I can't wait to get this shit put together. I, I've looked at so many of the Death Ray Designs things over the years. Like the uh, Infinity Star scenery you guys have got. Like, this is just super cool. Wouldn't this be a brilliant thing for 40k? So I'm really, really pumped to get the chance to work with some of it now. So, huge thank you to Justin, who made that possible. Two of our community got some vouchers here today. So... Mm. Oh, Sarah gets all of my basing. Uh, in fact, I need to speak to Sarah. I need to speak to Sarah because if we just pop this little base out of the way for the minute. Like, we've just been talking about import import taxes. This this base weighs a significant amount. This is the base for Magnus the Red. We got this undercoated earlier on today. Uh, there is a little plinth with the, uh, the fiery orb of change or whatever we're going to call that. But... To give you guys some semblance of scale, this thing that's filled with, I'm reasonably sure, shotgun pellets. I think that's what is used for weight. Because these are metal. But he's filled the base with what looks like shot and uh, like some weird spackle, glue, whatever. This thing weighs a ton, and that's 100 mil. Okay? So, there you go. That's that's 100 mil. The base is, at its highest point, more than that tall. It's obviously way more than that wide. This is a hell of a base. But when you've got Magnus, how can you not, right? So we've got a load of pigments we're going to be using all underneath here. Making sure this looks a little bit earthen, a little bit um, like natural, you know, get some browns and so on going in there. Then we're going to change the color up as we get around to the top of here. Still not sure how we're going to do this. It might be gray, not sure on that one. Might be sort of reds, oranges, perhaps. We don't know. Faded up through brown. Who knows right now? Who knows? Is it a playable base? I mean, no, it's a display base. The whole thing is a display model. So it doesn't matter. 
but I can't wait to get started on this. As Sarah has just started stocking a load of new products from uh, MIG, MIG Ammo, and they do a huge range of powders. So I thought, what better than to test all of that on than this? I mean, it does make our, our tiny scenic base here look a little bit, oh, you know. Uh, but this guy suddenly looks like the biggest baller in the world. This is a rap star now. The MIG stuff is the shit. I love fair, fair. I've never used their stuff. In fact, it's a lie. I've got the um, liquid mask that they make. I've used that. And that was pretty good. That was pretty good. But there is some marble. We're going to keep going on with these white lines. Might lay some of these out again. Just a different shade of pink this time. build up multiple layers of this marble effect. Justin, take it easy, man. I knew you wouldn't be sticking around for long. Have fun at work. Hope your shift goes okay. Keep on doing what you're doing, man. And everyone here, if you don't already follow Justin, go and give him a follow. You have to tag WHC in that Warhammer community. Maybe. Drunk Mystic. How's it going, man? All right, let's grab some of that real dark um, Screamer Pink. And some more water. But yeah, really, really, really looking forward to getting some work going on with that terrain. Got an entire table's worth of Necron terrain. Drunk Mystic, no man. Whip gets done, end of the stream. Almost every stream. Just now coming on that scream of pink, which is changing the hue of some of our marble effects again. Giving it a bit more vibrancy now. Ended up being a little desaturated a minute ago. Now I'll bring some of that pot back, so just glazing this over. Uh, Chimo, what color are we doing the rest of the base? I think yours are a nice green, green grasses and stuff like that. Is that right? How do you do the rest of your your bases? The one to tag is, is definitely uh, Warhammer Community because as soon as Damien said, oh, you should you should do this, I did. And a week later, my nights were on TV, so, you know. Monday's fine by you? Awesome, mate. So Monday after the Hellstorm stream then, as per usual. Sounds good to me. Again, just coming back in with some white, keeping it real, real light now, though. And the next step is going to be to just bring in some more shadows as well. Uh, it keeps the boss happy, absolutely. Grey stone for your 40k grots or grass and brown for AOS. Uh, okay, so grey stone it is then. Do you have any scatter? Do you have any like tufts or anything like that on them? Or Kept very simple. <laughs> hey man, I sent you some homework. I expect you to get that homework done. No, uh, no excuses now. Got a little bit more of that screen of pink. Just brush. 
rush through some areas of this a bit heavier, a bit heavier, a bit more heavily, just to pop out the colour a little bit more in those uh, those spots. And like I said, we're gonna start reintroducing our shadows. So I'm gonna grab some black and some screen of pink, mix those together again. No scatter or marble tiles. Okay. So just paint this into the recesses again, and then we'll come back and just re highlight the edges of some of these to crisp them up a little bit more. Uh, no, all of this is just going to be painted black. I thought about it and then I realized that all of this is the same texture as that and it would look weird. So I'm just going to paint the outside black to give it a nice frame. Liang! How you doing brother? Good to see you dude. How's life? There you go. Let's just get into this recess as well. Now, like I said, we'll highlight the edges of those rooms again. So to do that, we're gonna grab ourselves a little bit of Empress Children and some of that white ink to really pop that up a bit. Still stay very much definitely pink rather than go on to white and then just hit some of these edges. Get that maximum contrast. symbols, whatever these are. Just looking to make sure they're a little bit more sort of obvious, get a little bit more pop. Like so. same on here so we've done this edge from the one side and let's do it from here as well so it still stands out from this angle just get these as well so marble by hand super simple don't need an airbrush and wet wipes and all that sort of stuff certainly if you've got something small you want to paint with marble it's not really the best thing to use anyway. As you saw, it's a case of drawing some thin lines and then glazing in one of the colors that you've got in your marble over that if you want to keep it all similar. Uh, if we've been doing like blacks, browns, golds, you see gold in marble quite often uh, as, our, as our lines through it instead. Then obviously glazing over the top of it, not the option. If you keep it into a monochrome style marble, that's the way. Not bad for, call it 20 minutes work, perhaps for that part. Right, let's do this. So Chimo, you said, uh, great. Let's get a quite a dark gray then, in that case. We've got a grot who is predominantly gray. Anyway, that's great for you then, if you don't want that. Let's look for Mechanica Standard Gray. That's the one. Let's get a load of this down.
it's in the iron of touch. Just gonna take a couple of coats quick, but again, we're using a brush that's definitely had better days. And we'll wash this really, really heavily with some dark tone from Army Painter. It's really, really dark, and then we start getting the powders out. Basing pigments. So I'm not looking to get into every single crevice. This is not dry brushing though, we're still making sure we've got solid coverage. But we're going to use powders and we've got a wash to go over this, so it makes no sense to paint inside every little nook and cranny on this area of the base. All right? It just it's, there's no point whatsoever in doing that. It'd be a waste of time, waste of paint, waste of effort. I'm all for going the extra step, you know. But where it's needed, where it's worth it. Uh, have you tried playing? I have no idea what that is. So that would be a no. Is that a steam thing? Horror slash ghost games been making arounds on Twitch. Fair. Uh, no, ne never, never heard of it, dude. So, uh, I don't really get much time for gaming. I managed to get an hour earlier on where I just wanted to take a break um, from painting and so on. So I put League of Legends on. I managed to play a few games of Earth. Earth mode is super, super fun. Gotta love it. Um, Although, there have been so many new champions that have been released since last time I played, and I'm like, I have no fucking idea what's going on. Uh, there was somebody playing a champion that was a cat that attaches itself to you. We were in a lane together, and they kept having a go at me for being too cowardly, and I'm like, dude, I don't know what your character does, and it looks like I'm 1v2 at this point, so, you know, leave me the fuck alone. I told you three times, I don't know what your character does. Stop bitching at me, just tell me what it fucking does. Uh, wow, okay, so it's properly scary then. Phasmophobia. Fair. I think the last horror game I played was like Dead Space or something. Not really my, um, not my genre of game. Uh, or, no, it might have been Left 4 Dead 2. I might have played Left 4 Dead 2. Those. The fucking crying banshee thing. That can die. That, that, that can be unwritten from existence. Tell you what, let's not use... Let's use soft body black. Let's go with this. This is a wash from Zero Weapon Miniatures, which I clearly didn't mean to just knock out of my hand there. Um, this is quite cool. It's really, really dark, and it has a uh, ever so slightly sort of oily finish. Uh, I need a bit more than that. There we go. Let's uh, use this, mostly because I haven't used it in a while. I've gone through in tubs of this before though. Used to airbrush this all over my night chassis after I'd done them. Works so well on metal. But it's super super dark as you can see. You get some great coverage with it. So liking that so far. Uh cup goes on the game like properly fucks you up. Can I make a clip from another streamer here? Uh, you can do, yeah. 
Yeah, go on. Uh, as long as they're not playing any music that is like copyrighted music or so on. Is it a bit like Type of Corrosion? No, it's not textured at all. It's just super, super, super dark black wash that is crazy thin, but just does so well. Yeah, if, they're, if, they're, like, if there's music in their stream and it's copyrighted, or if the game is... So... Factor on this, when he yells the ghost's name, it angers them and makes them enter hunting mode, is when they try to kill you. The door slams shut, locked, and you have to hide, but the ghost gets glitched. Okay. Pause that. They're in an office, is that the deal? Do that so you guys can see. Oh, fuck off. Uh, what, can I get a picture with you? Please? I'm here for a picture. Nancy Thompson! <laughs> ah! The fuck? Fuck you! Ah! Get out of here! Get out of here! Fuck you, Nancy Thompson! Fuck you! Fuck you! Ah! 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 Get Is this out of a here. VR thing? Ah! I got it! I got the fucking picture! Oh my yeah, god! That's the Dude, the salt did everything, dude. Holy sh! I uh, can I get a Is picture? Is this a VR with you? thing? Please. I'm here for a picture. Okay. Nancy Thompson. I don't really get it. I was expecting it ah! to be. Fuck you! Ah! Get out of here! Get out! Fuck you, Nancy Thompson! Fuck you! Fuck okay. you! I mean, there was that. That was interesting, I guess. How's that scary? I was expecting to be terrified with a fucking ghost, like, rushing at the camera and shit. Not like a little girl ghost. Fair. That's at the end of like 20 minutes tension a bit. bit. Oh, okay, okay, fair, fair. I understand then. Like, so from an outside perspective, when you're just looking at it, it's like. Mm. But okay, cool, cool. Right, let's get some weathering pigments going down on this, and then this is done. We just got to attach our little dude to it. So I give him a quick varnish first. And then that can cure while we're working on that part of the base. So we can chop him off here, install him on this resin base, and he's good to go. Fuck you, Nancy Thompson! PT on the place to be PT, 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 PT. No, nope, don't know that one. Don't know that one. Uh, right, powders. Let's grab. Flexer, that'll be. We've got a light grey here somewhere. Which is these? Uh, light slate grey from Vallejo. We've got some black soot from Forge World. That's a 
don't need that in here. And some greens and stuff. If you don't want one more. Cobbler grey that I've got. Here we go, concrete grey. Cool beans. Saragon! Dude, how you doing? Thank you very much for that sub, bro. Uh, getting recognized you swear words for you on my picks of everything you say in process, so ghosts get mad at you for swearing too. Okay. Okay. It sounds fun, but I've never even done a. Well, no, I've done a VR game once, but it was like the world's first VR headsets. I don't know if anyone remembers these from like the 90s, but they were like this massive thing that you'd put on your head that came forward because it had a CRT like monitor in the, the front of the screen. So it was this enormous fucking box that you'd put on your head. Um, and it was at a convention where it was somewhere in Cornwall, I can't remember where. They had Street Fighter 2 as the game that you would play. So you were in these uh, like little enclosures. It was like a circle barrier around you. You're on this like pressure plate, so it could detect your your feet lifting off. Um, and then you wore gloves, which had cables going to them, uh, and that would control your hand motions. And it was Street Fighter, and you played Street Fighter in 2D. So what you were looking at was still the 2D environment. It wasn't a 3D environment. And if you threw a punch, then your character would throw a punch. And the only characters they had were E Honda, Chun Li, Ken, and Ryu. That was it. But to do a move, you had to do the move. So um, if you did if you did a kick, then you'd do a kick. If you threw a punch, you'd do a punch. If you did this, then you know um, Hadouken, uh, Dragon uppercut, all that sort of shit. Now, obviously, a dragon uppercut is the dumbest thing to do when this thing extends past your face because you do that and you punch yourself basically in the head. Um, but that was hilarious. That was great fun. I've never played a VR game as we have them now with like the little headsets and, and everything else. I think my phone can do VR, but I don't have a... Oh, maybe not, it's kind of old. Uh, right, powders. Anyone not know how to use weathering powders? So I've got a couple of different brands here. We've got one from Cromlec, one from Vallejo, and one from Forge World, which we might not even need to use, but certainly it's there just in case. Basically, there's lots of different ways and lots of different people will tell you that you have to do certain things and you don't have to do other things it's like almost everything in the hobby. Everyone's got like their way and they'll tell you that their way is the only right way. Whatever. There's no right way. Um, there aren't even very many wrong ways with weathering powders. Now, a lot of people will tell you you have to seal your powders down or they will come off. They will come off. That's fine. I don't seal mine. I'll show you why. When we start applying this to the mini we're applying it in a stippling motion and use a really really crap brush look at how buggered this thing is this is absolutely terrible and if you apply it in a stippling sort of way what you're doing is you're slightly embedding parts of this powder into your base it could be a miniature it could be just the basing part of it um, but i've done a similar technique on my knights um, for all the battle damage and the weathering that they've got and that goes straight onto flat plastic so not onto something textured like this is but onto something that is completely devoid of texture <sighs> knock that off blow off some of the uh, the excess now you'll see there's been a little bit of this just sort of retained in some of these little crevices and that's all we're going to do. We're going to just build that up a little bit here and there and keep doing it. Now, because we're not going to seal this, the effect that we've got on it now is the effect that we get at the final stage. This is exactly how it's going to look when it's finished. If you seal it, then the dry pigment that you've got becomes a wet pigment, which is what we normally call paint. 
and so it's a different finish. So I want this to resemble real dirt, real um, stone and, and things like that. And so I'm not going to seal it because this is the way I want it to look. And like I said, bits of this will come off. Yeah, we've got plenty on there now. If we just tap some of that, you can see it falling off. Actually, you can't see it falling off to my board, but it is falling off onto my board. But we've still got plenty left on there. Again, still plenty of it on here. Yeah, You don't need to seal them in, but if you don't seal them in, obviously don't then grab hold of your minis and start fucking rubbing your finger across it and so on and so forth, because that clearly is not going to do you any favours. The Art of War is here as well! My dudes, how is it going? Thank you for that raid. Let's get some hype and some love in the stream for these absolute bosses. What were you guys up to today? What was the uh, topic of conversation in your stream? How uh, upset are you, some of you uh, Marine players, by the current FAQ? Do you care at all? Are you like, nah, I'm not fast. How many of you have set Wolfen on fire? You know. Uh, how broken the Dark Angels rules? Dark Angels look great, man. Dark Angels look great. Stand still, plus one to hit. Deathwing Terminators? Like bricks. All of your Raven Guard? Have an inbound. So good. So good. I've got a massive Dark Angels commission to do. Uh, which is actually, some of it is sat on the floor right behind me. We've got boxes of intercessors uh, and the jumpy dudes, inceptors. Got some of those to do. Um, we've got ATVs. We've got chaplain on bike in the mail. All that left to do. Doing this for the world number one ranked Dark Angels player from last season, Nick McDade, who is possibly still in the chat. Good friend of mine. And an absolute boss when it comes to playing Dark Angels. Clearly. So he's well excited for this. Like, 100% excited. What's your, what's your favourite thing about the new Marine FAQ? Or do you hate all of it? Is there any part of it you're like, yeah, this is really, really good. I'm glad they did this. Because someone that doesn't play Marines, I mean, there's quite a lot there that I'm, <laughs> I'm glad about, you know. Oh, yes, we've built up some nice bright greys, digging those into our recesses. And the next step is just going to be to grab some black paint, and not black paint, black powder, and just darken down some other areas of the base, help model this together. Don't like Wolfen? Mate, Wolfen, ah, uh, whoa. Everyone's saying they're absolutely trash now. I, I don't feel like they're trash, they're just different. So they've lost their 5++, plus plus plus, you know, that feel no paint. They've lost that. Storm Shields have changed on almost everything apart from Victrix Guard. Which means that they don't have the invol save they used to have. That's okay. If nobody's got it, then you're about as defensible as everybody else. Uh, they've gained a point of movement, but they've lost advance and charge. Okay. I can see why a few people are slightly miffed shall we say about that but even so not in the world um, they gained a point of toughness and that point of toughness is really important there are lots of jumps in 40k from one stat to another 
that make no difference. So the jump from toughness one to toughness two, for instance, not that anything's toughness one, I don't think. The jump from that is the most pointless thing. All it means is that las guns and hand flamers basically uh, wound you on threes, not twos. That's it. Um, how the jump from T4 to T5 is massive. Because most things in the game that are anti-infantry are like your massed basic warrior, basic weaponry firepower, which for almost all armies, obviously tag, custodes, you know, a bit of an outlier, for almost all armies is strength three or four. So all the like little stuff that you would be shooting at them to try and get some wounds through, to try and chip a few off, 17% less of that goes through now. Which means you don't have to worry about your save so much. Uh, and they've got a 4 up armor save. But they then get plus 1 from their storm shield, making it a 3 up. If they're in cover, 2 up. It's also, in 9th edition, this is something that I feel a lot of people are forgetting. It's also in 9th edition much, much easier to hide stuff. That obscuring terrain rule which is usually breachable because it's normally a ruin, let's be honest. Infantry go flying through there. You know. So they still got survivability. You just can't run them up the middle of the battlefield in the open. And Fish, you're right. That was what I was going to get to with my point, but I sidetracked myself. Strength 8, strength 9. Don't win on 2s anymore. Do win on 3s. So you hit both ends of the scale with that move from T4 to T5. That's one of the most key stat increases that you could ever have in the game, is that one. Right, there we go. That is our marble base. We've got some black to paint on here, and then this is done. Then we're going to apply our little grot, Pushkin Daisies, onto this. So the first thing I'm going to do is carefully remove this guy without breaking his legs. If you hear swearing, I've either cut myself, possible, but not the end of the world, or the mini has snapped, possible, is the end of the world. Because he has definitely been super glued to this base. Okay, let's take it off of the shot glass. Yeah, you need strength 10 to win Wolfen on twos, which Wolfen have. Yeah. They're not without their uh, their thunder hammers, you know. Um, but stuff like this is always a good thing for the game. Because whilst your Wolfen may be slightly less good, are you still going to take them? when what you could take instead is, say, Assault Centurions. I, you know. They're a fucking lawnmower. Uh, why not take Thunderwolves? Uh, sorry, Thunderwolf Cavalry, rather. There you go, see? Thunder, Thunderfire Cannons no longer wound you on threes. Did they go down a strength? Did they go down a strength? If so, I'd missed that one. Ooh. 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 Lovely. Lovely. That one I'd missed entirely. Oh, to any marine player that uh, abused the living hell out of Thunderfire Cannons, there's a special place in hell for you. 
it's reserved. It says dickhead on the seat. They're obnoxious. Oh, I'm just going to chuck some Imperial Fist Thunderfire Cannons into your night. I've only hit with nine out of nine shots that I fired. How many people as well were sick of seeing Thunderfire Cannons that were either just the Forge World Rapier Quad Mortar Battery, so not a Thunderfire Cannon, um, or some very close to inspired by 3D printed ones because the fine cast one was shite. I think if you're going to be a meta chaser and abuse the rules, you have to pay the fine cast tax on stuff like that. 2D Spruce, you're going to hell. You only had two. You're going to purgatory for a long time and then you're going to hell. Too many uh, Chinese Thunderfire Cannons. Too many not Thunderfire Cannons being used as Thunderfire Cannons. Oh, I've converted this Thunderfire Cannon. I got an Admech Destroyer and I got some straws. What? Legit had somebody tell me that they converted a Thunderfire Cannon using half of an Admech. Uh, is it a Destroyer? The little tracked dudes? Uh, and a carton of straws. Very enterprising. Well, well done, lad. Well done. But, um, no. Pay the fucking resin tax. Also, does anyone reckon that the Chaplain Dreadnought's coming back in a new Forge World book? Uh, people use the turret of the Space Marine Hunter, put it on the field, and put a Tech Marine next to it. My god. My god. Jesus wept. That, that's something else, that, isn't it? Right, so there's our base. Let's just dry this last bit off, attach our grot, and then Pushkin Daisies is done. I think the Chaplain Dreadnought coming back would be the most obnoxious thing that Games Workshop could do. So I'm all in favour. Um, right, we do ideally want to pin him to this base, but unfortunately his feet are extremely tiny and getting a pin through there is not going to work. So we're going to glue him. You just need to find a good spot for him to go. I think that's probably the best. So just here. So we've got a little bit of pink marble. Good old Pushkin. More obnoxious than Perma Transhuman Deathwing. No, no, I, I don't mean obnoxious as in like, oh my god, the rules, they're broken. As in like, so, all you people in the community. I don't know how this machine works. Obnoxious like that. Permatranshuman Deathwing. Honestly. It's, it's pretty strong. It, it is really strong. But I'm weirdly okay with it. Honestly. Because it's, a, it's an army for people that want to take Terminators. And Terminators just have a special place in my heart. So, just because of that, I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, Fish, I don't think any Forger or Dreadnought should get the core rule. At all. 
I think only the ones in the Marine book. In fact, I think that about everything. Like nothing in the Forge World stuff, which is like extra add-ons to your army, should have core. So Necron, Akanthrites, or whatever they're called, definitely not. That shouldn't be core. There we go. Good old Pushkin. They call me Pushkin. Pushkin daisies. Looking like a baller. Actually, should we make him a baller? Should we give him some gold on his, uh, his lapel? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's grab... Uh, skills. Darker gold and then a lighter gold. We'll just do it this way. So we've got some Viking gold and dwarf gold. Do the Viking gold first. Yeah, BS2 does not need reroll once. You're absolutely right. Um, I'd be in favour of them also not being BS2. I don't see how locked in a box better shot. There you go. Pushkin, you've been promoted. But yeah, I think the uh, Relic Dreadnoughts, um, especially the Relic Contemptor, which is currently just bizarrely undercosted, uh, I think all of these should be BS3. Because if you need to, you can Wisdom of the Ancients it to reroll half your missed hits. You know? Or you can Chapter Master it because... Uh, no, Chapter Master only affects core and characters, doesn't it? So Iron Hands could still Chapter Master a Dreadnought character and so on. Um, eradicators desperately need nerfs. But obviously Games Workshop decided that they're going to sell a fuck ton of them, and so did not. Uh, does the heavy Melter rifle cost any additional points? I can't remember. I, I'm assuming it's also heavy as well, as in heavy weapon. But I can't remember that either. Uh, five points. Five points. Do you know what five points gets me as a night player? Five points gets me a heavy stubber, which didn't get changed in the FAQ to be in any good. I didn't expect it to, but you know it was hoped for. So, um, no fish. I I kind of agree because it should be contempt to mortis that gets the two guns. You know, take the relic if you want the extra uh, armor. Sorry, the extra wounds rather. Um, your invulnerable save, your feel no pain. Yeah, that's a good idea. Top man. Promotion to head mod. Right, Chimo. He's done. Pushkin grots. I'm kind of happy with him. He looks super cute. He's just. He's just nice. Just like him. So, glad we got to paint a little orc for October. Now, though, it's probably Magnus time. Yeah, it is. It's Magnus time. So, let's have a quick tidy up of all this. All painters. And then we can get on with Maggie. So on Magnus, on the last stream we did on him, we were working on his wings, and we got pretty far with him. We did the very sort of large uh, parrot style wings, but then we took some white ink, 
and basically cleared away all of that that we put back. What we're looking for as our final effect on Magnus is wings that look a little bit like Mother of Pearl. So let's zoom right out. So we started here, we've got a magenta that leads through purple, blue, and then into green and yellow. Lord Gitface getting his sub on. Absolute superstar. Thank you very much, dude. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you for your sub. Uh, Judiciary got nerfed to 3 inch aura, which is good, but then they made Chief Apothecary super duper good. It's on the whole, I think it got more buffs than nerfs. And it's broken, they got adjusted and just by a smidge. So still happy days for Marine players. Um, marine players are still, still strong. And the Necron Codex isn't as strong as the Marine Codex. By the time you layer up the supplement rules as well. Um, but eradicators are probably the only thing that really needs looking at. Everything else is kind of like, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, besides which, this there's some Necron shit that is dope. Um, give me a Nightbringer every fucking day. Silent King, absolute monster. You know, uh, BGV kind of broken. Blade Guard Vets, uh, I, I don't think they're broken. I don't. I think they're very good. But I, I think broken's too strong a term for that. You know. Is there a whip? There will be a whip, man. There will be a whip. End of the stream, as always. Uh, Void Dragon, less so. Nightbringer. Ah. Yes. Um, that heavy eradicator thing, yeah, it, it's it's gross. It's gross. Averages seven damage a hit. There's only one weapon in the game that averages seven damage a fucking hit, and that's the harpoon, which is ten. You get a few things at like three d three that average out to six. That's obnoxious. Nightbringer does need a new model, but we're looking like we're going to commission someone to sculpt it for us uh, as a 3D image so we can print one. So, what's the space for that? Um, the, the thing that is annoying me at the moment, and this, this is annoying me, uh, I try not to let it, but one of my knights has a little nipple melty gun, which is five points more than the um, heavy stubber. 10 points for a melty gun, five points for a heavy stubber. That melty gun does more damage per hit than my thermal cannon. The fuck? The fuck? <sighs> that tiny melty gun, D6 plus two at six inch range, thermal cannon, D6. 2d6 bit the highest at short range. Never mind. Never mind. Right, let's grab that uh, older brush again. What we're doing now, so we're just talking about the wings. So you can see we've gone from pink through purple, blue, green, and then a little yellowish hue out on the end here. Um, we then gloss varnished everything after giving it a very light dusting of white ink. So we just spray a load of white ink at an angle across the plane here to dust it over. And the reason we're doing all of this is so we can apply some glazes and some washes now to get inside of all our recesses to bring up a load of detail before we then just paint everything white afterwards. So we'll just be sort of coming in afterwards and just outlining every single one of these feathers, both sides, both wings, Uh, with our highlights so plenty to do on just the wings and then once we've done that we've got these little bits to paint which will possibly be 
red. I'm not sure yet. We've got some armor panels that go on just sort of in here. Um, these will be bone uh, horns or talons or whatever you would call wing hooks. I don't know. Something similar. Uh, she mentioned Malta is six, but you will get within six quite frequently as a knight. Um, because you want to be in combat, you want those charges to be short, so you're going to be hitting with a Malta in short range a lot. Eradicate should absolutely be given short amount of thermal cannons. What were we thinking, guys? How did we miss this one? Come on now, balance team. All of us, we need to get on board the Eradicate hype train and give them short amount of thermal cannons. It's basically just a form of aggressor. That's all it is. Up the power of them shoulder cannons. Johnson Bull Bigger. Thank you for the follow. So I'm taking some purple tone and I'm thinning the hell out of this. Uh, just chuck a load of water, like one to three purple tone to water. We want this to be super, super, super thin. This is why we've gloss varnished all of this in the first place, is to allow this to go into the recesses. Um, a bit lost my ad mech. Every list that pulls its weight, with the exception of Breach of Spam, it gives up an easy bring it down. An anti vehicle is so saturated on tables at the minute. But like, I play Knights full time. That's, that's what we play. And so I, I feel your pain. Everyone takes Titan Hunter against me. Um, and there's a shitload of anti-tank on the table. Um, to be honest, that's just something you have to deal with with that army. That there's no real counterplay to it. It's just this is the, the position that I'm in. Um, you could look at trying to limit your opponent to sort of 12 points on it, but. Is it going to help you out much? So it's light purple. We're just sort of splashing over all of this surface. Now, because this is so thin, and because we've got that gloss varnish down, this is going to run into the recesses. It's going to run into anywhere that we would need it to be pooling and do a lot of work for us straight away. Now, obviously, what we don't want to have happen is what's going on right down here. So we just come in and we'll remove some of these larger pools. So start with it at the top, let it drain down the model. Uh, Kenny would say, you know, stay busy in your beats lab, stay in motion. And you need to, you need to not allow any of that wash to pull up like this. So. Just remove a load of that, drop it off on the pallet, we'll come back to it in a sec. And then start again on the other side. Now what we have done is we've allowed this to go up into our area of blue. So we're coming into this, this part of the zone as well, right? The rationale behind that is because when we start applying our blue tints, which we're going to use that Gullum and Glaze for, you might just see me get out. We want to overlap our washes the same way we overlapped our airbrush spray to allow a little bit more blending going on. All right? This is simple blending. It's not even going to be wet blending. It's just going to be like layered glazing for blends. That's that's all. all right? Anyone can do this. We're not even holding the brush properly. We're like halfway to three quarters of the way down the brush, painting it like Japanese calligraphy for Christ's sake. You know, you don't need to be so careful with this. Careful part was getting that white layer down over the top of our airbrush color scheme. This part, you could train a monkey to do this quite easily, I'm sure. So let's remove any excess. Pop that one down just for a second. We'll work on this one for a minute. Um, blah, 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 blah. Happy Saturday Grace lost the fire twice if didn't move thing. I. I think that's probably the best move. I, I think it was a little over the top. Especially when they got blast. Frozen! Oh yeah, we're getting all the raids tonight. We've got the Art of War coming by. We had AMP services. Now we've got Frozen as well. My dude. How you doing? 
How was your stream? What were you working on? We've just finished uh, Pushkin Daisies, our ever so slightly Soviet Russian inspired grot, but with the coolest urban camo. Uh, so now we're doing a bit of work on Magnus and his technical wings. So I'm going to go back to here, make sure we've not got any pulls, which we have not. We're good. Little one there, though. I'll take that. Uh, Art of War here, too. Oh, absolutely, dude. Uh, just talking about some of the uh, changes to 40k, some of the new missions and so on. Daddy381, thank you for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Much appreciated, man. Uh, I'm not a fan of taking the missions edition. The missions I've got is going broken three secondaries. Yeah, probably. Almost certainly. Can Optic Spider? Ooh. I'm liking their rules. I am liking their strength they fucking smash attack that they've got. Uh, the Daddy, this is the wings for Magnus the Red. So we've been working on Magnus off and on for the last month nearly. And uh, he's getting there. Got a lot of work left to do, but he is getting there. What we're doing now is we are glazing over our wings. We're basically applying an all over wash, but super, super thin to help cement some of the color in these feathers. Now I have to stay in motion while we do it because what we don't want to have is a lot of pooling going on. We want these wings to have white feathers with a sort of mother of pearl style effect to them. So if we just change the exposure slightly on the camera so that it doesn't blow out too much on the white, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. A little easier, there we go. So you can see we've got a nice set of shades from purple through blue into green and then like a slight yellowish tinge on the very outside of the, the wing. And once both of these are together and framing our demon Primark boy, yeah. lots of color, lots of color. Uh, this is a kit from Gates Workshop, as uh, Tony Spruce has, has pointed out. So I didn't have to make it, uh, although it is in sub assembly, so there's still obviously some uh, putting together to do. But for now, just going to worry about the paint. So again, we'll move this purple up into our blue. And allow that to have a little bit of a play with what's going on there, so we can do the same with our blue, moving it through the purple. And into the green. Check for any areas. We've got a couple just there. A little bit too much pooling. Happy days. And when the white came in here, we obviously ended up with a few areas that didn't quite catch it as well. We'll have to fix that when we do our brushed highlights later on, though. You know, I waited the fuck down out of these, but they just. This is one of those kits that is just going to be a pain on certain parts of the assembly. Right, let's get the blue. We've got some Gullum and Glaze, which I've been told GW don't make anymore. I've got very little of this left, so we'll uh, preciously guard it. Cake Fisk! How you doing, bud? Thank you very much for that subscription, man. Absolute legend. Uh, so Chris, what are you thinking for your Necron list at the moment? I've been playing around with Nylac. Uh, you've got two pots. Mm. Tempting, tempting, Mr. Falson. Very tempting. It's the only thing I've been using to paint my, uh, my Alpha Legion with, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to stop doing the Alpha Legion Marines and create my own marine chapter is because I'm running out of the paint but equally you can't really do a lot with candy coat miniature paint schemes once you kind of put the candy coat down that's that's it that's what they're gonna look like very difficult to get in there with any highlight patterns and so on past that that stage so 
when we do our marine army at some point in the future, now that they're not obnoxiously powerful. Still good, but not, you know, utter bullshit. Um, yeah, we'll have our own custom chapter, perhaps. Mohawk Marines. So again, let the blue just have a play with the purple that we laid down earlier on. Blend those two together. It's not really wet blending, despite the fact that both coats of paint are still wet. It's just fucking around with glazes. It's not difficult, it's not tricky, it's not something you should be worried about or any of that sort of stuff. You know, just put the paint down. Uh, Recipe online for making your own gold and glaze. Oh, nice. Nice. Check them out then, perhaps. So again, don't let this pull too much. We're allowing this to sit in the darkest, deepest recesses. And we can apply plenty of it and you know, take our time working with it a little. It's not got the same workability as an oil wash, obviously, but equally, I didn't want to use oils on this because the cleanup uh, would potentially damage the white, and that's much more important than anything else. We've already got a lot to be picking up with our highlights and so on on this. I'd rather it not take an extra 12 years just because I scuffed some of it when cleaning the oils off. But now we're starting to cement a little bit more of that mother of pearl look. So, come in here on this side now. And as before, start at the top. Don't worry about overloading your brush a little bit because we're going to stay in motion. We're going to keep picking this up, keep moving it around the miniature until we get it all to just where we want and nowhere else. play with the purple side again and some of this green area as well brush that down the mini Just using the long strokes of the paintbrush to try and keep it all moving in that one direction Okay, and just come back here, make sure there's nothing that's pulled up too much. Looking good. Vexdor, thank you very much, dude. And Des, yeah, if you've got links, then by all means throw them up. If you haven't, then tell people to go and get themselves. It's completely your choice, sir. As a recently promoted head mod of, um, well, you've always been head mod. You, you have the power. The power, power of the voodoo, the voodoo. Well, I can't wait to paint every inch of this white. Isn't that going to be the most fun thing ever? So again. Let the blue play with the purple. Notice how it's just changing it ever so slightly. It's one of the best things about using glazing as a technique is that you can subtly alter effects really, really simply. Doesn't take a lot of practice, doesn't take a lot of trial and error, especially on something like this, you know, where we've got all this texture. A little bit harder on uh, like large flat surfaces, but again, just keep your, your paint nice and thin and you'll be absolutely fine. So just bring this in from around here. I hit all of these little sort of mid area feathers. I don't know if they've got different names, they probably have. I'm not an ornithologist. As before, Get down to the ear, some nice long flow motions. Sir Davos, double O, double O. Davos became a double O. Holy shit. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for joining. Uh, 
Um, my pleasure, dude. Thank you very much. This is, um, it was mostly airbrush work. In fact, it was all airbrush work so far. This is the first time we've touched a brush to the miniature, uh, to, well, to this part of the miniature at least. And um, it was a riot of color. So it was all done with inks over a Celestra Grey undercoat. So we came in with some magenta, some deep violet, uh, this is like a turquoise blue and then green that we just feathered out. <laughs> feathered out. Uh, to get to a little, little yellow kind of tint at the end. Um, and then we just took the white ink from the airbrush and sprayed it at an angle. So we just hit the edges of it. And then um, this is where we're at now. Cool. Let's keep going. Let's grab Waywatcher Green now, the next one. Once we've done this with the glazes, we've got to paint everything as our highlights. We've got to get the white out to do all of that. Now, one of the reasons that we've uh, used the techniques that we've used is so we can kind of cheat that a little bit. We've put this gloss varnish down on the wing to help protect all of the white, to help protect all of the color that we put down beforehand. And after we've done this stage, where we're abusing one of the uh, properties of gloss varnish, which is to lower the surface tension, to allow our glazes, our washes, to seep into the recesses a little bit better, we're going to matte varnish all of this. That's going to then bring that surface tension back. It's going to seal in everything that we've done here, which is great, but it's going to make it a lot easier to paint. So don't be afraid when you're working, especially on a large miniature when there's a lot to do, uh, or on something that you need to have a bit more control, to change the properties of the surface that you're painting on using some of the tools that you've got at your disposal, such as different varnishes. Uh, where am I from? From England. Uh, live not a billion miles away from Gloucester, so Gloucestershire, grew up in Cheltenham, if any of you know much about Cheltenham, then you'll know we basically had the races every year and that was kind of it. Right, just going to mingle the green and blue together just a touch more, so I try and bring back a bit of a turquoise hue in here. And now you can see we've got many more pools forming at the bottom here, so we just wick those away with the brush. We can do with introducing a little bit more green down here. So again, long, smooth motions with the brush to help that happen. Again, remove some of those pools. Want this to sit in the recesses and be a tint there, not to change the colour of the wing overly much. There you go, that's what we've got going on so far. Uh, you're a man of Kent! Nice, dude. Nice. I'm not entirely certain I've ever been to, to Kent. Can't remember it for anything specifically, anyway. If I'd been to Kent, what would I know about Kent? Like, What, what would be the, the thing that I'd have seen that would be like, yep, yeah, been to Kent. There's you absolutely like home of the Chav. I'll have you know that Cheltenham is home, home of the Chav. Chav, Cheltenham average. Unfortunately, we have, or we had, when I was in Cheltenham, there was a horrendous population of them. There still is. Ugh. Chavs. I've, I've never ever ever in my life understood chavs because they seem to be proud of being un or under educated stupidity somehow somehow became something to be proud of what the actual fuck Don't get it. Don't get it. 
The one thing that separates us from animals is the ability to think rationally. Now I appreciate I've done some dumb fucking things in my life, all right, before anyone starts bringing any of that up. But, come on, come on. Again, we've got a little bit of a, a jarring blue sort of stops then a green starts so we we'll just take a very small amount of this and glaze it on top of the front of that blue so that's a much more gradual feel ignorance is bliss they must be so happy as a collect what is a collective group of chavs a thievery a thievery of chavs. A tracksuit convention. You know. You don't have anything reasonable to be proud of. You left with anything that helps you feel like you belong. That's pretty deep. That is pretty deep. I think you've probably hit the nail on the head. Uh, just drop the arm again, tiny. Oh no! A Greg's Q, brilliant, brilliant. A Greg's Q of chavs. Wouldn't it be Mackies though? Like really? Like a Ronalds of chavs. Check for pools. I think we're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're tasty. Happy days. Okay, so gonna give that a quick go with a hairdryer. Then we're gonna matte varnish this. Ready for next time. Uh, what can we do in the intro? I could start working on Magnus's bubbles for sure. In fact, if we do that, there's no need to hair dry this at all. So I'm going to varnish that off stream, don't need to worry. So let's grab Maggie, the man himself. We've got Magnus the Blue! How long till you finish Magnus? This long. It's it's a what mate, that base is like a week's worth of paint. You know. Would it have been faster to rub it against an oyster at this point? Uh yes. Like quite definitely. But doesn't matter. Because it wouldn't have been faster to rub these bits against an oyster, which is what we're gonna work on now quickly. So all of the feathers on Magnus, and you can see there's a few coming in around the shoulder plate up here. There is delts. Is it delts? Lats. Uh, obviously on the arm here and very, very noticeably on his legs as well. We've got all of that. We've also got, by the way, Lee, all of these bits to paint. Loincloths, we've got armor, nipple horns, um, belt buckle of Magnus, the scrolls of Magnus. But all of these things need paint as well. So that there's a lot to do. Um, also, the blade of Magnus is still currently just one-sided blade of Magnus, so that, that still needs to be done. Um, yeah, it turns out being single means you've got far more time to paint. Jackie, if you're watching this, you know, I'm not dumping you, but fucking hell, I need to spend more time painting. Uh, so yeah, yeah, got to get on. Gotta get on. What color are you doing the armor? So we're doing the armor very reminiscent of 30k thousand suns. We're not doing candy coat. I said earlier on, candy coat is, it's just, you can't do much with it. Once you've started candy coating something, that's it. That's what it's gonna look like and that's the end of it. 
I don't want that for a model like this. This is a fucking gorgeous centerpiece miniature. It should never be like you settle for something. Uh, and so we're going to do red as a workup. Probably from green. But. Maybe from blue. So some of you guys have seen this before, the Kaitan that you'll see floating around in this every now and again. Oh, there's a Magnus, ta-da! Um, we did red. Toonie Spruce, I totally got your reference, so it's time to have time to get to it. So chill the fuck out, man. Maybe you should take the free seashells. You start off with green, and you build that green all the way through yellow, and then up to white. And then you come back in with red, and just gently introduce that to it but I'm thinking of doing it with blue Harsh is a trial so going from like super super dark blue there's that red on the Kaitan up through yellow so it's going to go through some greens before blending that out to white and then coming in with the red afterwards because I think that will help tie the armor to Magnus' skin tone. So there's thought process behind every fucking part of this, including painting red in a really fucking weird way. Uh, also, whoever said nipple horns rub me the wrong way, isn't that kind of their point? You know. So what I've got is some Celestra Grey, which we are thinning uh, maybe slightly too much now. That works. We'll see. Um, and we're just going to carefully paint this in everywhere that this sort of comes in contact with the skin. So all the initial points for the feathers to begin. Now, I'm probably not going to airbrush any of this. after I've done the white. I will probably airbrush the white though. And this is gonna take a couple of coats. And one of the reasons that we do this is so that we can introduce our color right up close to the miniature where we need to be very controlled, which even like with my uh, skill with the airbrush, and I consider myself extremely proficient with the airbrush. That was a bit Kill Bill, wasn't it? Um, I'd be worried about getting some of that on Magnus. Like, in fact, they would not so much be worried as, like, it would happen. Um, so yeah, if you just put down a quick coat of a colour that's similar to what you're going to end up with, you can use the airbrush to just tidy it up. I'm not going to do it on stream because filming that is not going to be straightforward and I don't want to run risk of fucking up the mini just to get that on air and I hope you guys can appreciate that and then this is a commission somebody's paying me to do this to the best of my ability not for the camera uh, here's another new about demolition man there were two versions US and UK went to Taco Bell wrestling you at the pizza hut yes yes he did uh, I've never actually seen the EU version I've always seen the Taco Bell version. But I did know that. Uh, it's nice to meet some brilliant films, but also some truly horrific ones. Passenger 57, epic film. Uh, I mean, he did the Blade movies, of which one of them was good. And that's it. Um, he did the film with Sean Connery, I've forgotten what it was called it was something War, Art of War possibly that was pretty fucking decent 
Uh, the Expendables. It was the knife before Christmas, you know. How could we forget that? Um, oh, mate, I, I can't wait for Demo 2. Ah. Never had a Taco Bell. I've never had a Taco Bell either. Is there even a Taco Bell in the UK? Do we have them here yet? I know there's one Denny's in the UK. In Cardiff, I think? I don't know if that's just somebody that's kind of recreating the US chain or whether it is actually like a real Denny's. Um... Yeah, you can see how difficult this is to film just using a brush. Try and do this with the airbrush as well. Obviously going to be extremely, extremely difficult, but at least we're getting some of this put down now. Uh, the reason the rest of the pizza is because about is only in the US and apparently UK. Oh, it is over here as well. Fair. Fair. Right, my only exposure to Taco Bell is basically American TV or YouTube. Uh, so I watch uh, Mythical Kitchen uh, on YouTube. The guy that does that, Josh, is hilarious. I think he's super, super funny. Um, and is almost certainly on the spectrum in a large way. Um, but he does a lot of uh, recipes from Taco Bell. Oh shit, there must be a Taco Bell because I watch. There's a guy I watch on YouTube, Beard Meets Food, who's a competitive eater, and he eats Taco Bell. So maybe it's just like the larger cities. You might be able to find it, like London. I think he's based in Leeds, so clearly a northern Taco Bell experience could be had. Uh. Standardized and salt food move. Someone wants to a picture of tacos. At least it's cheap. Ugh. Ugh. See, as someone that ran a Mexican restaurant, several of them, that made our own sauces. Anything we didn't make was our own fucking tortilla. Because if you've got time for that shit, then you've got other things to be doing. Um. But hell no, man. Everything should be made fresh. So much better that way. Although, can confirm, I wish we hadn't made our own chili sauces because some of that stung. A lot of that stung. KFC, I, I, I'm not really into. Uh, time for more of the boys. Oh, dude. Enjoy. Enjoy. That's my little uh, Friday pleasure. Sitting at a stogie, watch a new episode of the boys. Big fan. Never read the comic. I've been told I should by several people and that I'd really enjoy it, but just... Never had the opportunity. Yeah, KFC, I, I can't, can't really eat KFC. Um, I don't even know if they've got anything on their menu that's gluten-free either, so. Uh, Toonie Sprues, uh, both, and also as a special bonus, it hurt when I accidentally, unknown to me, rubbed my contact lens in my hand after drying it on a towel that someone had used whilst making chili puree from Thai red chilies. And uh, I couldn't see for eight hours out of the eye. That was a special bonus pain. 
that we weren't expecting, but we did end up with. I think I've told that story on stream more than once, so I won't go into it now. We will be going into the whip, though, very, very shortly. I'm going to paint this set of feathers on the back, and then we'll crack open the whip and see what you guys have been working on. So, exclamation point Discord, if you'd like to come and join in. You could be something that you've just finished, something you're working on, something that you're just proud of. doesn't matter. We like to keep it to a maximum of three photos per person. Only because I want to make sure that everyone gets their chance to be shown. And I hate skipping over stuff because it always makes you feel guilty. You guys have gone to such great work to put your work in the whip. And I feel like a bit of a shit for skipping it. But equally, kind of have to. So, just for me, not feeling like more of a shit than I usually do. Three pictures maximum, please. Um, also, don't forget, guys. On Sunday night stream, we'll be unveiling the first of our three giveaway prizes for this month. Last month, it was Sergeant Joven, because he stood on an orc. The loon boss from Sigma, because he's a goblin, which is close to an orc. And the mystery box, exclamation point mystery, which contained Pushkin Daisies, a fabulous little grot which went to Chimo who's got his own little grot army so Chimo I need you to send me your address please over on Discord so I can send this out to you uh, also exclamation point win because at the end of every month we give away a £50 hobby voucher to a hobby sockist of your choice last month it was Toonie Spruce who nearly spent it on an airbrush at the very very overinflated uh, prices that Element is offering We've managed to save him about 65 quid by pushing him in a different direction. So enjoy that on some models or some paints to use in your airbrush. Let's go have a look in Discord. Got to wash my hand before going to the bathroom after cooking with chilies. That that's a bad one. Yeah. Um, so last weekend, not the one we just had, the one before. Sorry. Uh, I had to stay at my lady friend's house for the weekend. And um, she did a nice spicy Chinese meal. Uh, and let's just say that despite washing her hands, she didn't do a completely thorough job of that. And uh, ouch, <laughs> just ouch. <laughs> right, let's see what's in the whips. We start off with Vex. Vex is working on a chaplain. This is the chaplain from the Indomitus set. Extra tingle is right, mate. Yeah, yeah, extra tingle. Um, moving on. Good start. Good start on the chaplain, mate. Um, photos are a little out of focus, a little bit hard to see some of the details there. Uh, I was hoping for another photo of the chaplain from another angle, but I don't have one. Um, he's very, very pale. Like, very pale. So. Not sure if that's the effect you're going for, but it's it's a little bit almost, this part's unpainted. That might just be the photograph though. Minis can be particularly difficult to photo unless you've got like studio lights and so on, like we have here. Um, Daddy Tubbs, I love this model too. He, he's so, so cool. Much better than the trench coat Primaris Chaplin, I think. Like way better than that guy. And then we've got some blade guard. It's not though. This is the the captain. He's cool. Yeah. Okay, I like this. Um, couple of things that you could improve on. So 
you could do with getting some highlights on your purple. It's a little bit flat, which is unfortunate because it's a main part of the miniature. You need to get a little bit more like pow going on for that guy. Uh, I like that you've gone with a glowing effect for the eyes. Now, we've done glowing effect on eyes a lot here. The entire Necron army had it all done in a very simple way. Um, there's a little trick to it which helps make it look a little bit more realistic. And that is that you need a slightly darker line just between the like the eye and the, like the section of the helmet that it's glowing onto. So if you just put a darker line, a very thin line along here, brightest point is the eyeballs, the second brightest point is the highlight that you do on the underside there, that will absolutely just like nail it. I'm guessing this might have been one of the new GW um, glow paints. It looks good, I like the glow, but if you do that, it will just, just put a little shine on it. Nice work, dude. Crazy Ant says, waiting for King. Mate, you've even gone with a Doomsday Arc. Firstly, I want to say you're a hero for painting a Doomsday Arc because fuck that noise. They are one of the most horrible things to paint. Um, and I instead have Doomsday Giraffes that I ordered instead because that's much cooler. Um, oh, it's the Vallejo one. Nice. Haven't used those. They are bad. They are... Wait, you mean the Doomsday Arc? Doomsday Arcs are a pain in the dick to paint. I'd, I'd rather my missus cook with chilies again than I had to paint one of those. Uh, but, nice, I like it. Scorepec dudes, on the go. Can't wait to use mine. Here's the army. In a box. Wraiths. Wraiths are not as good now, but... They're still okay. They're still okay. Might get some. Maybe a couple of months. Dr. Rhino's also got his crons on the go. I like these. So these... The main body looks a little bit like it's made out of plastic. Not that it's like bare plastic. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like something unpainted. It just looks like it's not a metal. I really like that. Love the grey and the orange. That's super cool. How are you basing them? Also, units of two murder buckets. Great for just like cheeky little actions in your turn. Yeah, very cool, man. Very cool. May Malv. Malv. How's it going? The yeah, always themed off of the Tron program. Oh, nice, mate. Very nice. Mars would good. Yeah, base might be black. Black would work as well. You've got a nice light grey. The orange is obviously going to pop out against that as well. Yeah. Nice, mate. The Johnsonator. Not far off. A few bits to amend. Maybe finishing tomorrow. Think I'm going to magnetize heads. So this is 30k Khan. Um, I don't think there's any reason for you to magnetize the heads at all because, frankly, that looks so much cooler. Look at that helmet. He is one bad man. However, you have done a great job on this. So I can see it. As always, mate. Fucking gorgeous. Really, really good work. That plasma pistol glow may be a little over the top. Um, the white in the middle looks a little too too much of a, a sort of blob um, so maybe just like drop in a few little lines in between just glaze that in just to get a little bit of a sensation of the sort of ribbed effect um, that's on the, the plasma coils uh, that again might just be the photo though so don't take that as uh, as rope but look at that helmet mate it's like a beast I mean to be fair He's missing his entire arm. arm. But I'd still wear a helmet. 
Uh, quid, been working on my Legion Dam Redemptor this week. 22 magnets used, lots of green stuff. We'd like to know if you think I should add flame to the center chest armor panel or as enough with the side panels, etc. Anything else you do, thanks for the feedback. Always happy to give the feedback, dude. Right, let's get a big shot. We are inside, we are inside. Uh, okay. I think the skull on the knee is slightly out of place. That just stands out as being something that doesn't fully belong. Um, so maybe just do a little something around that perhaps. The middle of the chest, so I think you mean like the belly plate of the, the Dreadnought. Uh, I think you're okay without the flames there to be honest pal. I think if you put the flames there, you'd end up with it detracting too much from the shoulder plate. So I'd leave that blank. Uh, let's move a lot of touch. This guy from this side looks good. Yeah, good work on those claws as well. Yeah, that's that skull on the knee just doesn't look like it belongs there. And there's a fucking mold line on that leg armor. So definitely get rid of that. Um, again, the skull on the back of this hand, I do a, a, a bit of flame around there as well. It might be, it, it comes out a little bit too much. Would you blend the skull on the knee to the knee pad? You could do. Yeah, yeah, you could do. So it's, it's coming out of the knee. That would work. Um, to be honest mate, it might be one of those things that once it's painted it looks great and you shouldn't have ever changed it. But as it stands now, I'm not sure. Probably best advice, undercoat it and see what you think then. Um, but the skull on the back of the hand, I definitely get some flames or something around that. That looks like it's just been sort of attached rather than it has a, a purpose. Um, it's also not quite really centered to any part of it. There's a rivet directly below it and it sort of lines up with that little like access panel towards the top of the fist up where by the uh, the elbow is. Um, but I'm not sure. The, the flames on the shoulder pad look beautiful. Love those. Uh, yeah, nice work on those cables, mate. Nice bit of re-sculpt as well on that arm. That's just class, I love that. Yeah, big fan of that. 3D printed the claw hand. Little untidy between that and the plasma cannon, but I appreciate that that's probably not gonna be seen either. So, you know, don't worry too much about it, but if you're gonna be picky, let's be picky everywhere. Uh, Yeah, so okay, so you've got that that obviously magnetizes on and off. I think maybe you just want to double check that that joint's not going to be exposed uh, and look rough when it's finished. Let's look this side. So it's magnetized to the base, torso, arms, weapons. Nice. Nice. I, I love doing magnetizing. Love magnetizing. Um, okay, mate. Yeah, overall, good work. I think anything that really needs it is those two skulls. Like, maybe look into that and, and see what you think after an undercoat. But fucking banging job, dude. Well done. Uh, Vex says, forgot to add this one. I tried to here to add a darker color in the under eyelids. We'll try more later. Oh, sweet. Let's see what we've got. Yes, absolutely. What you need to do now, though, is then come back in with the same colour you've used for the eyes and just do the line underneath that. So that darker gap, sorry, that darker line, it should be the gap between like where the lens is and the helmet is. So there should be, just between those two lines, that bit there may not darker, and it just makes it look a bit more 
than uh, than a glow. I hate magnetizing more than money, so well done. Brilliant. But no, good stuff, mate. Again, slightly more highlights on the purple because it's a main part of the mini. Uh, and then on this one as well, he's got lots of reds, so maybe I'd look at some highlights there as well. Uh, so it's just those sort of next steps with, with what you've got. Your base coats are great. You've got some washes down by the looks of it. Also great. It's now just moving that one step further with what to do with your armor. Keep it up, dude. Keep it up. Drope Mystic, first ever airbrush work up and wet blending. Okay, this guy's cool. What is it? I feel it's... I feel I know what it is, but I can't place it. Is this a Forge World chaos thing? Uh, keep the knee pad of stuff on. Also try to tie up the gun match it. Hey, no worries, man. War cry, that's it. That's it. Yes, now I've got it. Nice dude. Uh, good work on your skin tones. Yeah, I like that a lot. You've got some nice gradients in there as well. It all looks very smooth, which is very difficult to do when you're first starting out with the airbrush. So, yeah. Keep it up, man. What are you going to do next? That's the big question, isn't it? Saragon. Airbrush practice. Want to try out panel modulations or other things or something cheaper than a Riptide. Understandable. Nice. Nice. All about control doing this sort of thing, man. Um, some of your blends are a little stop start. The one on his left, as we look at it, foot is very much like here's some light blue and there's the dark blue, and that's that. Uh, but it's good practice. It's good practice. And some of these you've nailed as well. Yeah, good stuff, dude. Good stuff. And he looks cool. I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm guessing it's a Gundam. But he does look cool. He's a giant robot. Uh, and currently the last one, Crown Blade. Test Scheme and Trigger Rim. I mean, get that rim out. 100% out. Uh, test Scheme looks good. Looks good. Very functional, which I actually kind of like for Genius Day Cult. Um, couple of things that I would just sort of prod you to go a little bit further with. The arms on Gene Stealers for their like Gene Stealery arms have got those vents down the middle of the muscle groups and stuff. Um, it's a really, really good opportunity to add a bit more of a splash color to a miniature, which just helps pick out some of those details. They don't take a lot of work, even if you're doing like a double highlight on it, you can get through it really quick. Um, so I'd really recommend that you do something with those. Pinks obviously will work quite well against the sort of darker bluey gray. Um, but you don't necessarily need to have something that jumps out and because the rest of the miniature you've got here is kind of muted um, you've got the browns, the flesh tones, the silver that's that kind of darker, oilier, grittier silver I'd probably go with something that's equally dark but just bring out that extra bit of detail won't take long uh, and the light that you've got is a little bit lights are tricky to paint all right, um, who was it was doing that diorama? It was George. Same deal with, with his his um, light source. It was just a yellow thing. That was that was it. Um, maybe do some like orange to yellow. Purple for events would work. Yeah. yeah. Any of those sorts of colors work quite well. Orange, again, is another one that works quite well. It's just orange you'll tend to find being a lot brighter than you need it to be on something like this. So purple's probably the one to go for. Um, but I'd probably also do something with that little lamp as well. There's a lot that you could do to it, but keep it simple. Just maybe glazing some orange around the edges. So at least it sort of warms up into the yellow a little bit more rather than just like, there's the yellow. But nice one, dude. GSC, there's a lot to paint for a GSC army. It's not a quick job at all, so you know, absolutely wish you the best with it. Uh, and that base rim is completely triggered me. Gmo, that's probably your address, I won't click on that. 
Cool. Well, thank you very much tonight for everyone that put some stuff in the whip. Really appreciate it, as always. This is Pushkin Daisies, who is our grot that's going to be on his way to Chimo very soon. Um, probably by the weekend. Probably, he says. Probably. Um, I really enjoyed painting this. It was a quick mini because he was obviously quite small and not a humongous amount of detail, but we've done a little bit of flower freehand on him. We've got some great skin tones on the face there on the Hellstorm stream. And we've done a little bit of quick, easy, dirty marble this evening as well. So that was cool. Obviously, we did some more work on Magnus. Here he is in his blue self. We've got the wings just drying off. In fact, they're ready for their matte varnish. I'll probably do that before I go to bed tonight. That mother of pearl finish on them, which means... On Thursday stream, I don't want to paint these on, on air because it'll just be a billion hours of me doing this with some fucking white paint. Um, and that's boring. No one wants to see that. So what we will do is probably pick something out of here to start on Maggie. So we've got bits of loincloth to do which are obviously cool but you know, we've got some armor panels to do so it's all of that is armor panels these are armor panels these are leg armor panels these are leg armor panels that's just a random armor panel that he's got that's more leg that's his head these are wings bits this is a big fucking skull thing that goes on this in some way. And this is like a shoulder pad for him. I think it goes... I don't know. I'll work it out. So maybe we do armour rather than horns. We've got head horns, nipple horns. That's armour. We've got some random shit. So maybe we do the armour sections and we go through that weird workup from, I'm thinking we start off blue, go through yellow, bring that right the way up into white, and then hammer it with some red. And we'll probably use the flame red uh, ink for that as well, to really, really get in there with a super, super vibrant red. Um, Liriviel? Lir Purple on the Wings, go check out the VOD on YouTube. Uh, I've been really shit with uploading the last couple, so I'm gonna make sure I do that tonight before I go to bed. I must stay here to, to, to do that rather than just go and turn in. I've been really tired after the last few streams, which is just, I get this normally when the seasons change. It just takes me a while to get to sleep, so, you know. Uh, but yeah, the VODs will be up with that one uh, very soon. Let's go and find someone to raid though. Who is streaming now? We've had a couple of raids ourselves this evening, so big thanks again to The Art of War, Mr. Chris Frozen, and AMP Services. Who is still on? Ooh, could do this. Yes, this is a great time to raid somebody when they've just spilt paint all over their desk and uh, are now adjusting camera. So when we get there, give this man some hype, give him some love. I think he probably needs a little bit of that right now. And um, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you Thursday live at 9. Peace out. Have a good one.